Good evening and welcome to Grace Church Cathedral. This is evening prayer and a meditation for September the 18th. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. O gracious light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now as we come to the setting of the sun and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices, O Son of God, O giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. The Psalms appointed for this evening are Psalms 131, 132, and 133. O Lord, I am not proud. I have no haughty looks. I do not occupy myself with great matters or with things that are too hard for me. But I still my soul and make it quiet, like a child upon its mother's breast. My soul is quieted within me. O Israel, wait upon the Lord from this time forth forevermore. Lord, remember David and all the hardships he endured how he swore an oath to the Lord and vowed a vow to the mighty one of Jacob. I will not come under the roof of my house nor climb up into my bed. I will not allow my eyes to sleep nor let my eyelids slumber until I find a place for the Lord, a dwelling for the mighty one of Jacob. The ark, we heard it was in Ephrathah. We found it in the fields of Yerim. Let us go to God's dwelling place. Let us fall upon our knees before God's footstool. Arise, O Lord, into your resting place, you and the ark of your strength. Let your priests be clothed with righteousness. Let your faithful people sing with joy. For your servant David's sake, do not turn away the face of your anointed. The Lord has sworn an oath to David. In truth, he will not break it. A son, the fruit of your body, will I set upon your throne. If your children keep my covenant and my testimonies that I shall teach them, their children will sit upon your throne forevermore. For the Lord has chosen Zion and has desired her for his habitation. This shall be my resting place forever. Here will I dwell, for I delight in her. I will surely bless her provisions and satisfy her poor with bread. I will clothe her priests with salvation, and her faithful people will rejoice and sing. There will I make the horn of David flourish. I have prepared a lamp for my anointed. As for his enemies, I will clothe them with shame, but as for him, his crown will shine. Oh, how good and how pleasant it is when people live together in unity. It is like fine oil upon the head that runs down upon the beard upon the beard of Aaron, and runs down upon the collar of his robe. It is like the dew of Hermon that falls upon the hills of Zion, for there the Lord has ordained the blessing, life forevermore. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Job. There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job, and that man was blameless and upright, one who feared God and turned away from evil. There were born to him seven sons and three daughters. He had 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, and 500 she-asses, and very many servants, so that this man was the greatest of all the people of the east. His sons used to go and hold a feast in the house of each on his day, and they would send and invite their three sisters to eat and drink with them. And when the days of the feast had run their course, Job would send and sanctify them, and he would rise early in the morning and offer burnt offerings according to the number of them all. 
For, Job said, it may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Thus Job did continually. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came among them. The Lord said to Satan, Whence have you come? Satan answered the Lord, From going to and fro on the earth and from walking up and down on it. And the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job, that there is none like him on the earth, a blameless and an upright man who fears God and turns away from evil? Then Satan answered the, Lord, answered the Lord, Does Job fear God for naught? Have you not put a hedge around him and his house and all that he has on every side? You have blessed the work of his hands, and his possessions have increased in the land. But put forth your hand now, and touch all that he has, and he will curse you to your face. And the Lord said to Satan, Behold, all that he has is in your power, only upon himself do not put forth your hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. Now there was a day when his sons and daughters were eating and drinking in their elder brother's house. And there came a messenger to Job and said, The oxen were plowing and the asses feeding beside them, and the Sabaeans fell upon them and took them, and slew the servants with the edge of the sword. I alone have escaped to tell you. While he was yet speaking, there came another and said, The fire of God fell from heaven and burned up the sheep and the servants and consumed them, and I alone have escaped to tell you. And while he was yet speaking, there came another and said, The Chaldeans formed three companies and made a raid upon the camels and took them and slew the servants with the edge of the sword, and I alone have escaped to tell you. While he was yet speaking, there came another, and said, Your sons and your daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house, and behold, a great wind came across the wilderness and struck the four corners of the house, and it fell upon the young people, and they are dead, and I alone have escaped to tell you. Then Job arose, and rent his robe, and shaved his head, and fell upon the ground and worshipped. And he said, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked shall I return. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this, Job did not sin or charge God with wrong. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The brief word on this, this is the beginning of the book of Job. And what we have before us, this, this sort of the character of Satan, um, we tend to sort of conjure up in our, in our minds probably the image of the devil or, you know, someone with, you know, red skin and, and a forked tail and, and horns and a, and a pitchfork. But really what's, what's translated for us as Satan in the Hebrew is more like accuser or one who accuses. And this character of Satan is, is literally, you know, the, the person that accuses, the person that, that kind of, you know, brings suit against someone else in, in the heavenly courts. And this conjures in my mind an image of sitting in the dock. If you're a, a fan of Victorian England, this idea or this image of sitting in the dock is where someone who was accused of a crime would sit all by themselves and face their accusers while a trial was going on around them. And they were isolated in, in the dock. It was an enclosure. And if you pull up some pictures of, you know, Victorian England trials, you'll see this, that the accused is sitting alone in the dock during the trial. And that kind of puts us in mind of what Job, I think, must have felt like and what sometimes we feel like. And sometimes when things go wrong in our lives, we feel like we're being isolated and separated from God. We feel like we've got nothing left. We are cast down in the depths of despair. And when that sometimes happens, it can feel like the world is against us. The world is accusing us and we stand all by ourselves. And there can be this sort of overwhelming sense that God has abandoned us. One of the points of the book of Job, if you read the entirety of it, is that God has not abandoned Job. And that the sort of the, the reality is that God never abandons us, never leaves us to face our terrors alone. But the feeling can still be there, and it can be overwhelming. And what's worse is that um, if we feel like we've been faithful, like Job, we might be afraid to admit that we feel as though God has abandoned us. Because if we give voice to that feeling, if we give voice to that sense that we are facing our trials alone, we might feel like we're being unfaithful. 
And that might make us think, oh, you know, we're just fair weather Christians. We can't admit that things are awful. We can't admit to God that things have really gone badly and we are feeling isolated and alone. So what are we to do? As we work our way through the book of Job, and we will over the next several sessions, uh, several meditations, we'll be working through the, the book of Job, you'll notice there is a theme that crops up. Pay attention to it. Because the theme that crops up time and time again in the book of Job is that Job is honest about how he's feeling. He voices his complaints and he does not hold back. He does not lie about how he's feeling. And neither should we. We should be honest about how we are feeling. We can take it to the Lord in prayer as the old song goes and we can maintain our relationship with God. So even if you feel as though God has abandoned you, and I do think that at times all of us are in a position where we feel that we have been abandoned, or we feel like we are facing our trials alone. It is okay to say that to God. It is okay to say that out loud, no matter if it seems scandalous to others. If we are honest about how we feel and we can take that to God, sometimes that all by itself can open the door to healing. So I would encourage you, be honest in your prayers, even when things seem at their darkest. Because it's true that we never face our accusers alone and that God is always with us. God is always with us as we face our trials. We continue with the Magnificat. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our forebears, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful, we entreat you, O Lord. That your holy angels may lead us in paths of peace and goodwill, we entreat you, O Lord. That we may be pardoned and forgiven for our sins and offenses, we entreat you, O Lord. That there may be peace to your church and to the whole world, we entreat you, O Lord. That we may depart this life in your faith and fear, and not be condemned before the great judgment seat of Christ, we entreat you, O Lord, that we may be bound together by your Holy Spirit in the communion of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all your saints, entrusting one another and all our life to Christ. We entreat you, O Lord. Almighty God, you have given your only Son to be for us a sacrifice for sin and also an example of godly life. Give us grace to receive thankfully the fruits of his redeeming work and to follow daily in the blessed steps of his most holy life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord Jesus, stay with us, for evening is at hand and the day is past. Be our companion in the way. Kindle our hearts and awaken hope that we may know you as you are revealed in Scripture and the breaking of bread. Grant this for the sake of your love. Amen. O God, you manifest in your servants the signs of your presence. Send forth upon us the spirit of love 
that in companionship with one another, your abounding grace may increase among us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. This time I invite your own intercessions and thanksgivings. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service, and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now may the road rise to meet you, and the wind be ever at your back, and the sun shine warmly on your face, and the rain fall softly on your fields. And until we meet again, God keep you in the palm of his hand. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always.